Welcome to Prezheim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 15 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the command event of an ASP.NET button control. We'll also discuss about the command name and command argument properties. ASP.NET button control exposes two events, click and command events. In part 14, we have discussed about the click event. In this session, we'll discuss about the command event. When the button is actually clicked, both the events are raised. Click event happens before the command event. Let's look at that in an example. Here I have a simple ASP.NET web application. Let's drag and drop the button control onto the web form. Now, when I double click the button, the event handler for the click event is generated automatically in the code behind file. And if you look at the source of this HTML, we are using this on click attribute to wire up the event handler with the click event of the button control. Okay, so now let's say I want to write to the response team button click event. Okay, now let's see how to get the event handler for the command event. And first of all, how do we find all the events that are supported by a button? There are two ways. One way is to simply right click on the button control, go into the properties window. Usually we get to this property screen. So click on this, uh, you know, lightning uh, bolt symbol and you should see all the events there supported by the control. So here the button supports the click event and we already have a event handler for that. And we have the command event as well. So now one, once I double click here, the command event handler should automatically be generated. And if you look at the source, you should see it has added the on command attribute. And then we are using button one underscore command. This is the name of the method which is going to handle the command event. Okay, so here let's say response dot write button command event. Okay, so let's actually put an HTML break here so that the output comes properly in separate lines. Okay, so now let's put a breakpoint here and run the application. So we said that when we click the button, both the events are raised, the click event and the command event. Okay, and the click event happens before the command event. Let's look at that. So here we are in the code. Let me click this button. So as soon as I click the button, look at that, button click event ha is handled first. And then when I press F5, we should have put a breakpoint here. So let's put the breakpoint there as well. Now let's click that. So first button click event. And then once I press F5, it comes to the button command event. Press F5 and the output as expected. So when we click the button, keep in mind that both the events get fired, the click event and the command event. And I told you there are two ways to actually find out what are all the events supported by a specific control. One way is to obviously uh, go to the properties window and then find them there. The other way is to actually find it using code. Now, if you look at this button control, the ID of the button control is button one. So in the code behind, when I say button one dot, you should see all the methods, properties, and events that are supported by this, uh, this control. Whatever have that, you know, flashing symbol or lightning bolt symbol, you know, those are the events. So click event, command event. Okay, so these are the two events supported by a button control. So this is another way to figure that out. All right, now, how do we hook up the event handler to the event of a control? Now, for example, we have, you know, the button has a click event. When that event occurs, this event handler method is being fired. So how are we hooking that up? Using the on click attribute. So this on click attribute is telling to the button control when the click event occurs, call this method. Similarly, on command attribute is telling the button control, you know, when that event occurs, call this event handler. Now, is it possible only to do it in the HTML? So here we are associating the event handler to the event of a control using, you know, the HTML declaratively. Okay, now we can do that programmatically as well. Now what is going to happen when I actually remove these, you know, hookups here? 
Now if I run and click the button, the button control does not know which event handlers to call. That's why nothing happens. Look at that, nothing gets printed out. Okay, because we removed those associations. So we have seen how to associate you know the click event to the event handler declaratively in the HTML using those attributes. We can also do that programmatically using delegates. Let's see how to do that. So in the page load, which happens before obviously the respective post back events, the click and command events, what I can do is button one dot click event. So to the click event, I want to associate an event handler. So button one dot click plus equals new event handler. Here event handler is a delegate. Okay, so this delegate now is pointing to this function button one underscore click. So at runtime, when the click even happens, the button control now knows it has to call this function and a function with this name. And similarly, if I want to associate the command event, so button one dot command, and then give a space, press plus equals, and then now if you press tab, automatically it generates the event handler name for us. Okay, so event handler delegate is used to hook up this method with this event of this button control. Okay, similarly we are using a different delegate here, command event handler delegate to hook up com button one underscore command. This is the event handler which should be called when command event occurs on button one control. So now if we run that and click the button, you know, it knows which event handler to call when that respective event occurs and then there we get the output. All right. So event handlers can be associated to the events of control in two ways, declaratively at design time in the HTML using the attributes or programmatically using delegates. Now when do we actually use this command? Most of the time in reality we use the click event, but when do we actually use this command event? Okay. Now if you have multiple button controls on a web form and if you want to programmatically determine which button control is clicked then we can make use of this command event along with the command name and command argument properties okay let me actually show you a demo then it will be much clear so here I have a little bit of HTML just to save some time in typing I have it here so let's go to the web form. Let's get rid of this HTML that, why, that I have here. Let me paste this. Okay. Now if you look at the HTML, it's pretty simple. All I have is declarations for the button control. So let's look at the design first. So I have four button controls here. A button which says print, delete, show top 10 employees, show bottom 10 employees. And if you look at the source, it's pretty simple. So button, this is the ID, run it is equal to server, which is pretty simple. I mean, text is equal to print. And then I have on command attribute, okay, which tells which event handler method to call. And if you notice all these four button controls, you know, the on command, you know, all the button controls have the same event handler here, command button underscore click, command button underscore click. You know, if you look at the on command attribute, and then there is another prop, uh, attribute, command name property uh, attribute. If you look at that, for the print button, the command name is print. And I have given delete as the command name for delete button. And for top, you know, for the button which shows top 10 employees, uh, I said the command name is show. And similarly, for bottom 10 employees, the command name is show. Later, I'll tell you how do we actually, what is the purpose of these command names. And if you look at that, if you look at these four buttons that we have, the last two button controls have command argument attribute as well. So command argument top 10, command argument bottom 10. Okay, but these two button controls, the top two buttons, print and delete button, they don't have command argument. Okay, and then there is an output label which just prints out the message. Now, if you look at the code behind, let me copy that. Let's get rid of this code. Okay, so if you look at this code behind, it's pretty simple. Now, 
we know that this command button underscore click event handler will be called whenever you click any of these buttons. Why? Because on command attribute you specified this is the event handler that we want to call for all the four buttons. And then look at this. In the code behind, we are programmatically determining which button is clicked depending on the command name. Now, if you look at the, you know, the event handler method here, this event handler method is actually taking in two objects. One is sender, which is of type object, and the other object is of type command event args. Okay. Now, this object, if you look at this command event args object, e dot it has got the command name and command argument properties. And if you look at the HTML, we have specified the command name and command argument properties. Okay, so when I click a button, what happens? This event handler get fired. I mean, this event handler will handle that event. And then whatever is the command name and argument that you have specified here will then be passed into this object. And then I am using that object's properties to determine which button they have clicked and what do I have to do. Okay, so if the command name is print, so if you look at this, for the print button, the command name is print. So we know that's, you know, that's one way to figure out they have clicked the print button. Similarly, if they click the delete button, then command name will be delete. So you click the delete button. We are using the simple switch case statement here. And then, if you look at top 10 and bottom 10 employees, I mean, we have a but two buttons, show top 10, show bottom 10 employees. If you look at those two buttons, both for both the but buttons, the command name is show. So, it gets, whether you click top 10 employees or bottom 10 employees buttons, it gets into this block. And look at this, here, I'm using another property of this command event args object, which is nothing but command argument. What is this command argument? Whatever you have specified here. So here we have specified command argument as top 10 and the command argument for bottom 10 employees as bottom 10. So now I am using the command argument to, to figure out which button the user has clicked. So if e dot command argument, and if you look at this command argument in the IntelliSense, it so shows that it's an object data type. So we need to convert that to string before we compare it to a string. So if the command argument is equal to top 10, then we know that the user has clicked the top 10 employees button. So we, we show that message. Otherwise, we, we say, he clicked the bottom 10 employees. So this way, we can actually look at this. Now, I have four button controls on this web form, but how many event handler methods do I have? I just have one event handler method. Within this one method, I'm handling the click events, I mean the command events of all the four button controls. And then I am determining what to do based on the command name and command argument properties of the button control. Okay, so obviously now, as you might expect, when we run this, when we click, actually, let's put a breakpoint so that you will understand what actually is happening. So we'll put a breakpoint in the command name there, run the application, and now, as soon as I click the print button, you know, the command name will be, look at this, when I click the print button, so obviously, command name will be print, so it comes here and then prints that message. So I press F5 and we should see that you clicked print button. And similarly, if I click show top 10 employees, so command name is show, it comes into this case statement. So let's press F10 now. So it comes into this case statement and then command argument, it's, it's now checking the command argument. So if you look at this command argument is top 10. Okay, and top 10 is equal to top 10, so it's going to print this out. So press F5, and we should see you clicked Show Top 10 Employees button. So basically, if you want to, if you have you know multiple button controls, uh, and then you you have only one event handler method, and you want to programmatically determine which button is clicked, we can make use of this command event along with the command name and command argument properties. 
So if you have multiple button controls on a web form and if you want to programmatically determine which button control is clicked, we can make use of command event along with the command name and command argument properties. Command event makes it possible to have a single event handler method responding to the click event of multiple button controls and that's what we have just seen. The command event, command name and command argument properties, these are extremely useful when actually working with data bound controls like repeater, grid view, data list. You know, we'll be talking about these three data bound, data bound controls in a later video session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.